What is the best writing software for a professional author? I'm going to answer that question today. I'm going to tell you what I use and what a lot of authors I know use. For those who don't know, my name is Lindsay Baroker. I'm an author of science fiction and fantasy novels. I've written dozens of novels, several series at this point, and I've been full-time doing this for my day job since 2012. So I've had a little bit of experience. I wrote my first couple of novels with Microsoft Word. That's sort of the default that most people kind of start with. Uh, now some people use Google Docs too, but the software I use is called Scrivener. And if you've been looking around at all, you've probably seen it. There's a lot of tutorials on, the, on the YouTube and on other websites. Usually those guys just kind of show you how it goes when you're starting a fresh project. And I thought it might be interesting for my readers and for other authors out there to see what it looks like for an author who's I'm on book nine of an urban fantasy series right now. This is going to be the final novel. And you can kind of see, I'm going to show you it, do a screen share and show you my setup and just kind of walk you through the features I use in Scrivener. It's, you know, it's, a, it's writing software. It can be for brainstorming for lots of different things. It has a lot of features. I kind of minimalist. I use the basic stuff. I never did any of the tutorials. I just jumped in and got right going, got going right away. Um, I will say I'm not usually like an early adopter of stuff, but this was one of the few things where I saw it and right away I was like, oh yeah, this is way better than what I had before. I've, I've used Word and Pages and, I, and I'll show you in a second here. I'm actually, as soon as I can share screen, hit that button, get the share going, I will show you my screen. The, this is a, don't read the screen if, you, uh, if you're one of my readers and because obviously this book isn't out yet, this is my rough draft. I'm about halfway through book nine in uh, Death Before Dragons here. Um, I do want to show you kind of the sidebars over here and how I use things. This is, um, I make a new file for each novel, but what I do is I copy over the character sheets and all that stuff each time, and I'm going to show you that. But let me go ahead and just show you how, why I like, you know, versus just having a manuscript that, all, you know, it's one file, you have, to, you have to search for something. Like if you're wondering like, oh man, what was going on in that scene where the dragon was in the sauna in chapter 17? Was it, was it chapter 15? Um, because in my books, dragons go in saunas naturally. Um, but you know, it's really easy because you'll see over here on the left, I name my scenes. These aren't anything that I put into the novel. These are just for me. So I know what happened in that scene. It's really easy for me to like go down and like, oh, the dress fitting, there's a wedding in this novel. So um, I know exactly what that scene is. And, and I do the chapters. These are the, these will become the final chapters in, in the novel. And since this is urban fantasy, fairly fast paced for me, I, I usually only have like one, maybe two scenes in a chapter, but of course, if you're doing something like epic fantasy or just something with a whole bunch of POVs and you switch and have a lot of scenes, you could certainly have like four or five in the chapter. And, and it becomes even more helpful then to, to see the names right there over in the, in the sidebar like that. It's just so much easier to jump around uh, with longer novels. So, you know, I'm cruising through, I'm about 40,000 words into it. Let me show you real quick another feature I use all the time, which is kind of plugging in the uh, manuscript target to give myself a goal. I often overshoot it. As my readers know, I'm like, oh, 80,000 words is good to end up be 90,000 or 100,000. Recently did some uh, sci-fi that ended up, started out the novels were 80,000 and by the end, I think I had seven point of view characters and the last couple were around 150,000. I'm gonna be doing epic fantasy next. <laughs> it seems like a natural fit, right? But um, so yeah, you can put in the manuscript target here and then the session target, which resets every day. So you can see it's early Sunday morning as I'm recording this. I haven't written anything for the day yet, but um, you know, you might put in whatever your goal is. If you're just doing writing part-time, which most people do uh, for, the, for a long time, uh, you might only have like a thousand words a day. That was my goal when I first started writing and I still had the, the other day job. So easy to put in. It's just kind of helpful. A, a lot of authors like to see that the word count there is, uh, you know, for me, that's more effective than just setting a timer and writing for a certain amount of time. I make myself write until I finish the, the words that are my goal. So, but beyond the basic stuff with the scenes here, under this, we've got this, you know, this is huge for me because I'm on, as I said, book nine. So all the characters, I put the main characters over in here. Uh, these are character sheets. And I'll go for my, my dragon here, the sauna guy, Lord Zav Zavrid Nakwital. My narrator loves me, guys. Um, we just call him Zav for most of the series. And um, so you can see that Scrivener will give you templates with like role and story, occupation, physical description, and some other stuff. Hey, you can fill this in. You see that I kind of just do my own thing. I'm a rogue, guys. I tend to, I do do the physical description because it's great to have that, especially in later novels. If a, for a minor character, you might not remember. Hair color, eye color, things like that. And I'll also put in some details like for, for my dragon guy here. Uh, if there's like an actor or something that I have in mind, 
like how the character looks, I will definitely put that in here. Um, I don't know how many Stargate SG-1 fans will be watching this, but later in the series, there was this uh, god, Gold. he thought he was a god. You guys that have seen it know what I'm talking about. And uh, it was played by Cliff Simon, and the character was Ball. And so, and, and he had this robe and he was completely haughty and they had the voice, like the Darth Vader kind of echoey voice. And I was like, this is a perfect model for my dragon who is quite haughty as dragons tend to be. He mellows a little bit as the series goes on. But in book one, he's kind of a dick, let's be honest. And um, that character was just perfect for what I had in mind. And this is helpful too, when you go to, if you're um, self-publishing, you're gonna be hiring a designer or, or someone to do the cover art for you. And if you can just tell the artist like, hey, Cliff Simon 20 years ago, that's kind of what I had in mind for this character. They can have that. Uh, it helps them a lot too when they go out and try to find a model that's kind of in that vein. So, you know, I'll put the clothes in. I also will just, I kind of uh, do characters and plotting and world building on the fly. So I'll just, if there's a bit of dialogue or something that explains a little bit about the character's backstories, I'll make it really quick. I just copy it after I write it and paste it in here. I don't necessarily spend a lot of time before I start writing the story, kind of filling in, doing a story Bible and characters and all that. But you can see I've done a, a lot, you know, the main characters, of course, I've even done like her sword, I think has its own character sheet at this point, but um, this is my heroine Val. Again, physical description, background, why she is the way she is, her clothing, and she's also got magical weapons and trinkets. So this, I just put it under her character sheet you could, uh, you know, make uh, separate files for them if you wanted to, but it tends to be the, I tend to think of the person carries these things, so I associate with them, so like, uh, you know, magical words, I just threw it in here, it, you know, again, not super organized, it's really only for me, I'm not, I'm not somebody that writes in shared worlds or has other authors jump in, so it just has to be for me, same with you when you guys do it, and, um, it, you know, by the time you get later in the story, You'll have a lot of characters so it's really helpful just to be able to jump over there like oh yeah that's how I spelled that weird dragon's name or, or that's what that guy looked like and what I'll do is I will um, start like this is my ninth one in the series I, I've now told you that guys five times I'm sure you needed to know but um, every time I make a new uh, file for a new Scrivener file but I copy over all the character sheets and I also copy over um, get down here my notes and um, I didn't do places for this one. That's another thing you could do. Like if there's a bar you want to describe that you're going to have the characters come back to. I didn't do it with this one, which is funny because I thought, oh, it's a contemporary urban fantasy. It's set in Seattle. The, the places I know already, I don't have to do these. But looking back, I did have a lot of, she went to a lot of different worlds and a lot of uh, made up, you know, the bars where the trolls hang out in, in Seattle. So I should have done it. But I have all that stuff in my story Bible that I made. And um I put everything just under research, but what you could do if you are actually doing research for like historical fiction or maybe a hard sci-fi or something, you might want to actually have documents over here that are like things you need to remember for the book as you're writing it and put it in there. And then maybe you would do notes for like what I've been doing here. I, again, I just keep everything as the series progresses. So I end up with a lot of files over here, book nine notes, book nine outline, and, and then I can jump back again, if I'm like, which book was it that something X happened to that I now need to refer back to from book nine. So this, this is why for me, as far as writing software goes, this is by far and away the best for me. And I should, I probably should have said up front, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get anything if you guys go buy it. it it's pretty inexpensive too. It's like 40 or $50 for Scrivener. And it's not a subscription thing. It's one where you buy it and it's yours. I think I finally paid for an update this year and only because my mac os finally they like they weren't <laughs> supporting anymore on uh, I, I upgraded the os and i had to get a new one because uh, nothing was supported anymore of my old software but really inexpensive writing software so and just having everything over here on the left i just i love that i know you can make tables of contents and something things like that i used to do that in word so i could jump around in my files and i know google docs and those things have features too but it's just great for me having everything over here easily accessible with a click, not having to open a separate file or, or jump around or do like creative, like I don't have to create the table of contents or anything like that. So I think that is probably about it. You know, the, the character sheets are down here in templates. Um, again, you can use notes. You can, I don't use any of this stuff. So it, it really does a lot more than I use it for. But if you jump in, if you open up Scrivener and you're thinking, wow, this looks really complicated, it's actually not for the really simple stuff. I, 
I'm one of those people that I won't read the instructions or follow to a tutorial unless I get stuck and can't figure it out. And I've never had to open up the tutorial. I don't think I've ever even opened up the help file on this. It's pretty intuitive, I, I, I would say. And um, obviously I use it for novels. And like I said, I make a new file for every novel and copy things over, but you technically could, if you were doing like a short series, or I've definitely done just one Scrivener file for like a collection of novellas or short stories, uh, that is an option. When you, if you look around on YouTube, the, you know, it walks you through starting from scratch and there's options You're like, is this going to be a novel with parts? Is this going to be a short story collection? Is it going to be nonfiction? So it, there's really a lot of stuff you can do. I, I think I've probably talked about just about everything I do. Um, when I am done with the file, when I've done kind of my first editing pass and I'm ready to send it off to like my beta readers or my editor, I do at that point, there's an option to export it or convert it into a Word file. So at that point I use Word because that's still sort of the de facto for the editing and basically the publishing industry at large. And at that point, we, for the track changes and all that stuff, when I go back and forth with my editor, uh, we stick in Word at that point. And then uh, again, I'm self-published, so I upload everything myself, the final eBooks to Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and the, all the stores. So at that point, I take the finished Word file and I drop it into Vellum, which is a, I think they're Mac only right now, but it's a really uh, handy formatting software and that accepts the Word file and the cover art. But for up until that point where I'm ready to start working with my editor and my beta readers, I do everything in Scrivener and it's, it's really easy to, to export it to Word when you are ready to do that. So. That is about it. I hope that was helpful. I don't know if I gave any teasers for, uh, I didn't want to do spoilers since I've just published book seven and, and book eight is coming next. And so don't read the screen guys. Nothing, nothing here for uh, readers who care about spoilers. But hopefully I've given you enough about the software. Uh, again, Scrivener is the name. I think Literature and Latte is the name of the company, but if you just Google Scrivener, you'll find it. And you know, let me know if you have any questions on it that I didn't cover, that if I can answer them or point you in the right direction, uh, just leave a comment below and I'll try to answer that. Otherwise, if you found it helpful to see kind of a novel in progress, uh, just let me know if you could give me a thumbs up, I appreciate that. If it was helpful, share it with someone else. I really uh, appreciate you watching my channel, watching my video and have an awesome week guys, thanks.